If you spend any time on our channel, you know that we have the tendency to focus on a lot of cut paper collage work. And today we're going to be working on a similar project, but we're going to be working with something with a bit of a twist. We're going to be using a different type of paper to create a textured experience that will bring us to a different type of art style. This week on Mixed Media Masters. Hello and welcome back to the studio. If this is your first time here, then welcome. It's good to have you here. Please feel free to sign up for uh, our regular ongoing instructions in art and helping you unleash your inner artist. Now this week, we're gonna be approaching the collage process a little bit differently. We're still using paper, but we're using a special kind of paper. And to that point, we're talking about tissue paper. Now I will put a link down below in the description so you can find this yourself if you need to. Uh, the good thing about tissue paper, first of all, is there are a lot of colors to choose from, and it's also very affordable as a material. And what I want to be able to do today is I want to think about a palette that will work for a piece of art that I want to create. Now, we're going to be building on this piece of paper here. It's an 18-inch by 24-inch piece of heavy watercolor paper, my go-to Strathmore watercolor paper. And the thing that's really cool about this is it's going to give us a, a surface that we can in essence, adhere our paper to, but we're gonna do it differently. Now, if you followed any of the instructions we've done in the past, we'll go in and we'll say, all right, let's cut this piece of paper out, we'll use a glue stick and we'll put it down. We're not gonna use a glue stick today. Instead, we're gonna use something that you probably already have on hand as well, and that is white glue. Now, we're gonna use Elmer's Glue All for our project today, but you can use any kind of PVA or polyvinyl acetate glue for this project. And the thing about this that's gonna make it really easy for us is we're gonna to need to water this down for the task at hand. So I uh, I just happen to have a ramekin, I don't know, coincidentally just uh, hanging out here along with a little sponge brush. And uh, let me get a little bit of my, uh, my white glue into the ramekin here. And again, the amount I'm gonna use is gonna be dependent upon uh, how big the project is. I'm gonna put like a, maybe about a quarter size uh, blob at the bottom of my ramekin here. And a lot of what I wanna focus on is thinning it out. So I have a bottle of water here. And again, I don't want to make it too crazy thin, but I do want to make it a lot thinner than it currently is. I'm going to add a, a splash of water, and I'm going to work on it for a bit. What I'm looking for is something that's like a milk-like consistency when I'm done. So let me just get in here, do a little bit of stirring. And by the way, I'm using this, uh, this foam brush for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I find trying to clean glue out of paintbrushes is not the easiest thing in the world, and it doesn't always go according to plan. And secondarily, I like the fact that this stores a fair amount of moisture, because it is a sponge, and it's going to make it easier for me to pick up a lot of this glue mixture and get it to where I want to go. All right. So there it is. It's kind of a thin milk. I could add a little bit more glue to this if I needed to thicken it up. I think this will suffice for what we're trying to do. All right. So I have that made up. I'm going to just tuck it over here for a moment. And let's talk a little bit about our palette and what we want to be able to do here. Now, again, I am, I am able to use just about any kind of colors I want. With tissue paper, you can buy different collections, different colors. And I'm just thinking out loud here of, uh, you know, what do I want to drop down as kind of a foundation? I have kind of a hot pink. It's a, it's a brighter pink color. I'm going to go with some brighter colors. They're going to end up being pastel-y uh, regardless. Let me grab one of these uh, sheets of pink. Though. We'll get that out of the bundle here. And there we go. So uh, what are we going to do with this? Well, I'm thinking... Then what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, I'd like to tear this and make basically pieces by tearing the shapes that I want okay, that I need here. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of just start by tearing a, a piece out and I'm just going to make something relatively organic. And do I want a flat side? No, you know I'm going to I'm going to make it almost like boulders here where I can make it so it's a little bit more organic. We'll do the same thing on this side. And again, there's no right answer here. It's going to be based upon your aesthetic. And uh, this is a bit of an experiment, obviously, whenever we do anything like this, because what we don't know is how these pieces are all going to come together. But I'm going to start with just, a, you know, as, as John Cage, the musician, once said, begin anywhere. And I think it's great advice. Just figure out when you're creating an abstract art piece, kind of start somewhere and then work it from there. Your brain will tell you along the way what's going to work for you. But I think this is, a, this is a good thing. Now, do I like the orientation? Do I want to change it this way? Again, I don't really know. I'm going to try to stay within kind of a, a squared off area. I want to leave some white spaces on the margins here, just so it helps frame the artwork a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to kind of put that there and we'll take it 
from that point. Now I'm gonna come and grab my glue mixture here. And again, this is when you get that sponge brush nice and uh, damp. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to start to lay some of this down. Now I may need to hold it down with my hand initially. I'm gonna start hitting up the edges here a little bit. And uh, by the way, one of the things that we wanna be able to see here because we are using tissue paper is that there will be some wrinkling. There will be times when it starts to kind of just, you know, get a little creepy, which is kind of what we're looking for. And so let's come in here and uh, do just that. I'm gonna go through here and hopefully you can start to see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but we're starting to get some, uh, some wrinkles that are kind of forming here and it's giving us an interesting texture. Now, there may be times, by the way, this is tissue paper and we're putting basically water onto it. So is it gonna end up being fragile? Yes, and there's an opportunity that it might tear. And in some cases, the tearing may just add to the texturization of what we're doing here. But I'm just gent gently bringing my brush over it, trying to get all parts of this wet and so that will really allow me to kind of create a wrinkled effect. That's really what I'm going for here. And uh, you determine when, uh, when you've reached the point, trying to get out most of the bubbles. That's really my objective right now. All right, so that's pretty good. I don't, uh, I don't dislike that at all. Let's, uh, you know what, a good color that will go with that pink is uh, this blue color here. So I'm going to grab some blue. And let me, uh, again, I'm going to just tear. And I'm thinking maybe something that will go over here like this. So maybe a little bit longer than the current piece that I have. Uh, whoops, whoops, looks like I have more than one piece in here again. No problem. I can separate those out just fine. And the imprecise art of tearing tissue paper here. Again, I'm thinking something that will kind of wander from that side over to here. So... Um, I can, let's just get this opened up a little bit so I can work with that. Let's, uh, let's just create a piece over here that will kind of combine well with our pink piece. And again, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the square edge just to make it look a little bit more like it wasn't pre-manufactured, which it kind of was, right? And uh, again, if I do something like this, or even better, you know, I can overlap a little bit here and that will make things more interesting as well. And we'll talk more about the overlapping process because it's going to allow us to bring different colors together. All right, so I can leave some white space between them, but I think in this case, I'm going to go and I'm going to create an overlap here. You can see already we have a purple color that's emerging as a result of this new uh, relationship. So let's get in here. And again, I'm going to have to pull these together. Now, one thing I'll mention just because it occurs to me is that, you know, you may run into situations, depending on the quality of the tissue paper you're working with, where if it's not a, 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 uh, a held fast dye, uh, you may get some bleed. Now, I've not run into that with the, bro the products I use, and if you follow the links that I'll share with you, you should be able to get the same results. But just going to mention that the materials may vary depending upon which ones you're using. And if you end up with something where you put water on it and starts leaving dye all over the place, it's probably not going to give you the results that you want. So look at that. So there we go. And we are getting a similar creepy pattern on here with our wrinkles coming up. And again, let me just kind of work this a little bit. I'm going to be as gentle as possible, but I want this all to get glued down and get the bubbles out. All right, and there we go. All right, so uh, again, you know, what you end up doing with this is entirely up to you. I, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of excited by what I'm seeing here. I'm gonna stick with some, uh, some fairly basic colors. Um, you know, whenever we work with an artwork, sometimes we need to think about what's kind of the center here, what is gonna be the piece that is really uh, the primary focal point. I'm gonna put something that you can't miss. We're getting some yellow in here. So yeah, let me grab my sheet of yellow. Hopefully I'll get only one this time. All right, this is one of those things that's gonna just challenge you. Yeah, there we go. I am victorious. And uh, again, I'm gonna kind of do a, just a, a, a measurement here. Let me just 
I'm going to get a little bit of a hair down the middle. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it goes according to plan, sometimes not so much. And uh, I'm looking for kind of a big yellow area to work with. Okay, I think that will give us at least a, a jumping off point. Good. So I'm going to, again, I just want to kind of rag edge these, uh, these current straight cut edges just to give it a more organic, natural look. You may, uh, you may love the straight edge and find that it really fits into your aesthetic. So do you do you. Whatever's going to work for you at the end uh, is, is going to be the right answer for you. All right. And we'll do that. Let's see. Oh, not so terrible. Not so terrible. Um, and again, if I do a little bit of overlap here, all right, that pink and the yellow can find a, a, a place here. I've got a wrinkle in here. Hopefully, uh, once we get some water in here, that'll come out. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just take this back just a little bit, just so I have a bit more of a margin here. And, or do I want to do it from the other side? You know what? I can uh, I can solve two problems at the same time. <laughs> I can get rid of that, that fold in my paper and uh, also just make this a little bit shorter. So, always a solution. Always a solution in here. All right, come on. Go down there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so there we go. So roughly the shape I'm looking for is kind of this blob, which is good. I have my margin over here on uh, the left-hand side, and I have a good right-hand margin. Yeah, I think that's going to work well. Let's get that brush nice and uh, sodden, and uh, let's come in here, and let's start laying down some yellow. Now, I will mention, by the way, I'm looking inside my, my glue. I'm picking up, I picked up a little bit of blue. So apparently I did get some blue from that other piece of tissue paper. So be careful that you don't create anything that might cross-contaminate your colors if that's not what you want to do. I'm also seeing a little bit of yellow that's coming off. So apparently uh, I was wrong. My paper is, is a little bit prone to bleeding as well. And we'll try to make sure we don't get it on the paper itself, on the background paper. So let's get some wet in here. Okay, and there we go. Get the edges. It's going to be important, of course, to keep this thing adhered down properly. I don't want it, I don't want it popping up. I still got a big dry area here that's going to need to be moistened. All right, let's start working this and see if we can get the, the bubbles out and the wrinkles in, as it were. Nicely done. Yeah, and this uh, this yellow, obviously, that's that's a big splash of color right in the middle. You are not going to be able to look away from this piece. Oh, not to mention that it's it's a pretty bright piece to begin with. Mm -hmm. All right, liking how this is turning out. It's more wet on there, and a few more things to work out down here. Made just a little bit of a hole here. We might have to cover that up with another piece as we're pulling things together. And we'll decide, you know, again, uh, what's our color theme here? Are we sticking with these three primary colors? Are we gonna add some uh, secondary, tertiary? Or are we gonna blend things a little bit differently? But, you know, again, one of the things I love about this is we've got a purple that's happening here. We've got an orange that's happening here that is naturally being introduced. So it's a very, very polychromatic piece. It has, uh, well, the definition of polychromatic is that it has over 70, percent of all of the visible colors. So if you, well, we, we look at our standard color wheel, right, the Joy, Roy G. Biv approach, it has 70% of the colors, as opposed to being something that says only blues and things like that. But uh, yeah, something nice and bright for your house, for a child's room, for your room, what the heck, you're, you're allowed to enjoy bright things as well. All right, Liking it, liking it. By the way, uh, one of the things you will notice when you're working with the watercolor paper is that it may start to wrinkle a little bit as it gets wet. And uh, as it dries out, it will settle down a little bit. And also, uh, and I'm not making this up, there have been times that I've taken this and uh, you put it, uh, basically you iron it. You use something like a towel and you put a towel over it and then you iron it flat. And uh, it flattens out nicely again. So uh, just, a, just a tip there. All right, let me, uh, let me do one. One other thing, I'm noticing something that 
it's probably not a deal killer, but it's going to make me unhappy. And that is up here, I'm getting a little bit of blue bleed. You may not even be able to see it on the camera, but I can see it here. And I just want to get that off the paper uh, best I can. And there's still an opportunity to do that. So there we go. That's a little bit better. And again, it may not be a big deal, but uh, yeah, don't want that. Have a little bit of yellow bleed right there. Same thing. Let me just get in here and see if I can minimize that. Better, better. Okay. Now uh, let's talk about our next colors. And again, I mean, you need to probably organize. The thing about working with tissue paper <laughs> is it's it, it shows up nice and folded, you know, all these sheets that you can get to. And by the time you've been working with it for a while, you basically have a pile of crumpled stuff. So it's, it's hard to keep your tissue paper pristine, uh, and sometimes it's just maybe a, a battle you don't even need to fight. You just let it go and do your best to kind of refold and stack it, but uh, it's, it's not going to get there. All right, what do we have here? You know what? I have a green color. I have actually a couple of different greens. Let me pull it out for you. Um, and uh, again, I can start to do an assessment of how things are going to look by just holding them up against the current artwork. Um, you know what? The dark green kind of fits the motif, but I think it's just a little too bright. I think it's a little too bright or too dark, whatever it is. I'm going to use this uh, pastel green a little bit. Now, what I want to do with this, I still have a section down here at the bottom of my artwork that I might want to think about how this is going to kind of fall into place. Is it going to be a single piece that covers it? Or maybe we put a green blob there and, and something else there. And uh, I still have a piece up here I might want to, I don't know, I might want to create something that will fit into there as well. Let me, um, you know what, I'm going to create kind of a, a green blob that's going to go down here more on the left-hand side. So, I'm going to, again, just jump in here and tear us off a piece to work with. And let me, yeah, yeah let me kind of tear this across. And let me tear this straight edge off. All right, and uh, ooh, that'll work nicely. That'll work nicely. So once again, I'm going to kind of position this, dry position it, and uh, I'm, I'm keeping a mind on the fact that I want to keep kind of a, a three inch or so margin over here on this side. And uh, I'll have a couple inches here at the bottom. So I think that looks kind of nice there. And so uh, let's get something in there. And uh, oops, again, let's make sure we get it cemented down. There we go. And uh, again, I'm going to start brushing toward the inside of the piece of paper, just in case there's any kind of uh, dye bleed, we don't end up putting it on the other piece of art we've already put down. Because there's, there's nothing more disappointing than working hard on something only to kind of end up ruining it in the last, uh, last moment by, you know, getting a drop of paint in the wrong place or paint line that won't come up or pencil lines or anything like that. So we're going to just take our time. Whoops, bring this up actually. Come on, back down. Not that wrinkled. Okay, there we go. We're getting some, getting some nice edging on here. And that edge is fun. That edge is fun. Again, you know, it's it's a good organic look, which is part of what I'm hoping to get from this. We're getting some, uh, we can see the, the wrinkle lines on this one pretty well. This color pops out nicely. Let's get some. And again, this kind of pea green color that's coming out from the combination of the green and the yellow is, uh, I think, appealing. And a little bit more. A little bit more. It's just need to get the wet all the way through the tissue paper down here. Again, if you want bubbles and that's your, if that's your look, then uh, do that. But I'm going to try to keep mine as adhered as possible. All right, cool, 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 cool. You know, by the way, that green is cool, but maybe now we go back to the dark green and we get a two-tone thing, right? We have a green and then a darker green that's sitting next to it. I think that might actually work and we get have something that's much more prismatic. Let's get this piece here and yeah, I'm gonna make it much smaller. We don't want to make them exactly the same. That's part of the fun here. Okay, so there's a piece there. And again, if I put that like that, I have that margin at the bottom. 
I have a yeah, I have about a th similar three inch margin over here. You know what? I think that's going to work for what I need to do. And uh, let's come in here and let's get our new green piece. <laughs> the 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 green piece is uh, not green piece. If you know what I'm saying. Let's go in here and get this guy cemented down as well. You can actually see how the water's being put onto this color better than the, the other ones. Whoops, and also let's not do that. Got this slightly stuck to my fingers. That's not the objective. All right, use this. Uh, well, it's wet. It's going to be a little, a little hard to work with here. So let's make sure we don't pull up the stuff we've already done. Yeah, this is where the sponge brush really comes in handy because you realize there's a lot of moisture that you need to introduce into the scenario and be much harder if you just were working with a standard paintbrush. But here we go. And again, now that we've got this wet, we can start to work on, well, making the wrinkles show up, basically. Yeah. I'm like, most cases where we're trying to get the wrinkles out of things, we're going to put the wrinkles into things here. And I hope you're getting a chance to try this at home. Uh, this is the kind of thing that, again, where your results are going to vary from mine, and that is perfect. You do what you need to do, and what colors are going to work best for you. And let me just got a little bit, just a little bit of green on the white there. And uh, again, I don't want to get down to that last little thing and have a something that just bothers me, right? That's the thing about sometimes, and, and, and by the way, the average person looking at your artwork may say, hey, I never even saw that. But because you created it, you, you have the tendency to say, oh, I know where all the flaws are. And every time I look at that piece, it bothers me that I can see that boo-boo that I made. So we'll do what we can to minimize the boo-boos. All right. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Um, happy with how this whole piece is coming along. The last thing I want to do is I think... I want to do something with this white space. Now, we could certainly use white as a color, and in some scenarios, this might be perfect, but I think for this piece here, we're going to create a very narrow band of something in here. Again, let me walk through my colors and uh, see what I have here. And uh, do I want to do it. You know, I have a gray here. It's a, it's a light gray, but it actually might work for what we're doing. Let me get this out of here. I'll have a purple, but I think I'm going to go with the, the light gray. There we go. And uh, again, because it's kind of, you know, almost non-color, if you will, compared to everything else, it might actually stand out beautifully. We don't need an awful lot. Yeah. Take this here and uh, just rip off of it like that. So... Again, I can do a kind of a test fit and get a sense of how well this color fits here and even at a slight angle. I don't hate that. I'll be honest. I'll, that's, that's not bad at all. All right. Let me, uh, let me again get kind of the square edges just taken off of here. That's all I want to do. Make it look like it belongs with all the other pieces that are in here. And... Beautiful, beautiful. And again, now if I dry fit this in here, I can kind of create something uh, that goes across like that. And again, you see how that pops everything? All these colors start to work together, but when you look at it, where does your eye go? Your eye is kind of focused on this little area here. Um, and that's that's phenomenal, that's phenomenal. All right, let's get some glue on here. And again, I'm gonna just start by making sure that the edges are being addressed here, and that's it's gonna be an easier glue job since it's a smaller piece. And let's come in here and let's marry all these different pieces together. We still have a little bit of white there. Now, again, we, we might say just white is great because white is a good contrasting color as well, and uh, it really lends something to this piece. And Little overlap on the yellow here, overlap on the blue, and on the pink. Yeah, happy with how that's come out. 
All right, so there we go. And the fact that it's at a slight angle is kind of knocking off the symmetry issue here, which is, I think, again, with, with abstract art, sometimes what you're trying to do is, is trick your brain, make your brain go, ooh, that's kind of cool the way it is. Now, I, I suppose if you, know, if you like things nice and orderly, this would not be your favorite thing. But uh, for an abstract artist to be able to have something that's going to work here. Now, I'm looking at this, and I'll be honest with you. There's one area that still seems to me like it needs a little help, and that is the yellow. The yellow is great, but I think the yellow needs a little something in here within the actual yellow to kind of break it up. It's almost too much of it in one place, and it becomes a little bit dominant. And so uh, I'm going to, again, let's see what colors that I have in here. I'm thinking of a darker color, and uh, I have a brown. No, I have a gold in here as well. Will this totally destroy what I'm trying to do? Uh, and the answer, that may not be it. That may not be it. And the answer, actually, I like this gold color a little bit better as a darker. And I'm just thinking almost kind of a, a blob that goes here, right? And uh, you know what? Sometimes you don't know if it's going to work until you test it. So I'm going to tear off a piece of this gold. I guess I'm going to tear off a big piece of this gold. And let me just make kind of a blob. And I can just dry fit it, right? I can drop it in there. And I can say, does this work or does this somehow just, you know, get in the way. Okay. And uh, let's just see what happens if we were to do that. Okay. Maybe a different angle, maybe something that kind of works within the, the relationship here. Uh, you know, I think it does work. Is it perfect? Is it is it exactly kind of what my brain said? Oh, now this will fix it. Not sure it is. And sometimes you won't know until you actually glue the whole thing down. And, uh, and get a sense of what's going to work here, right? But for now, I, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking now. Oh, by the way, you know what? Before we go there, let's just uh, let's just explore this with a different color. And this is a beautiful thing about you know prototyping things. I have this purple color here. Now, purple is a natural complementary color to yellow. And uh, boy, <laughs> I don't have tissue paper. So I can, it can take over the room. All right. Ooh, you know what? I think the purple is going to work better than that, that gold will ever. Even though it wasn't terrible, I think this might actually be a better solution. Let me so let's do a piece coming out of here. There we go. And uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get in here. And again, I'm just going to make kind of a, uh, an oval shape. Um, I don't think I need this tail on it. I'm just kind of in here, like this, maybe. Again, just angling this work to go there. Just go. No, I think I think something that has kind of a an interrelationship with this V here, where the two green pieces come together, may actually work for what we're doing. Um, let me just try something else. And, again. You know what? Yeah, the fact that it extends over here, I like more. I like this a lot more. Let me just kind of just, yeah, let's get rid of this, this edge here. And I have the square edges here that I want to just unclean up, as it were. They're just too nice. I need to make it less nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. That's much better. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully you agree. You you may not. Again, it's uh, it's all about different aesthetics. Do I like it straight across like that? Do I want to put it at a slight angle? I'll be honest, the fact that this is angling down a little bit, I don't really want to angle this up. I think that, I don't think that works. I don't think it works. So I'm going to just kind of keep this piece, maybe at a slight angle, maybe just not as, as sharp an angle. And it's going to sit here entirely in the yellow. That's where we're going, all right? And again, by the way, you make this and you say, eh, that's not really what I like. Make another one, right? There's nothing to prevent you from saying, all right, I tried something, it didn't work, it was a learning experience, and now I'm gonna go try it again. And uh, by the way, the, the second time, it's always gonna be better. It's always gonna be better because you're gonna have insights that you didn't have the first time. There we go. And by the way, the, uh, the purple, and the yellow showing through. It's going to be kind of a brown color anyway, so we might have actually 
had a similar scenario here. But I think that's going to marry really nicely. So. And I like this slight overlap here on the right-hand side. I think that gives us a little bit of pop of color where the uh, purple and the yellow are sharing that border. All right, get a little bit more wet in here. And it'll help us with the uh, color blend as well. We'll be able to see more of the yellow coming through as we get this a little bit wetter. And uh, we'll see how, how this dries, if, uh, if it changes anything a little bit. I'm finding I'm getting some interesting texturization up here that's happening as a result of just how things dry, the brush marks and all that. Let's get some. Get these wrinkles defined. A bit more wet. All right. Now, at some point in any piece of artwork, you, your brain has to <laughs> give you permission to say, all right, I think we're done here. And I'm going to stop here. Now, is this perfect in every way, shape, or form? Hard to say. And like I say, with uh, you know, often with regard to creating any kind of abstract art, while you're creating things, sometimes it's hard to see the long-term appeal. And oftentimes I'll take a piece like this and I'll just put it up on the wall. And I'll look at it for a while and there'll be times when I'll look and say, you know what? No. And But sometimes what also happens is I might look at a piece that I've already worked on and my brain will say, you know what you need? You need this here. And I can go and say, you know what? You're absolutely right. So while I'm sitting here building it, the answers may not come to me. I might have to wait a little bit and then I can sit down and say, all right, let's create something. Uh, or add a little something to make this uh, go to where we need to go to. Now, by the way, this uh, this purple color and this gray color have almost come out the same in a lot of ways. So, but uh, anyway, I'm I'm not unhappy with this. Now, I don't think I'm going to put this in the uh, in the gallery. I think this is uh, what we call a, a, a an art lab. Right, we're getting a chance to kind of work out an idea. But um, I'm going to ponder it for a bit and think about it. Hopefully, you can build something of your own. Get a sense of what's going to work for you. And, uh, and take it from there. Anyway, I hope you had a good time today. Uh, this, uh, this certainly was a, a one-hour masterpiece that lasted less than one hour for sure. And uh, always happy when we can create something pretty quick. And uh, also, it just ends up looking good. That's, that's the goal here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for dropping by. And I'll talk to you next time.